square root. Let's just make a little sense of this. Here the problem is the square root, right? So you split it up. Then you multiply by the square root, or you multiply by the same exact term, because the reason why is when you multiply a number by itself, you get something squared, which undoes the square root, right? The inverse operations. Let's say I now put in the cube root, OK? So now we do the same thing. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the cube root of everything, right? It's not the square root. So now, does the cube root and something squared undo each other? No. The cube root and something cubed undoes each other, but not the cube root and something squared. So by multiplying by 5z is not going to get you to end, to, uh, is not going to cut it. So what do we need to multiply by? 5z squared. Now why 5z squared and not 5z cubed? Because we already were multiplying by a 5z. So 5z squared times 5z will now give you 5z cubed. Does that make sense? And then we'd have to do the same thing up top here. So remember, whatever your root is, when you have to rationalize the denominator, you've got to make sure that you're multiplying to rationalize the denominator to get an exponent inside your radical that's going to be equal to your root. Does that make sense? So then you'd multiply this across. So really, this is 25. So then my problem would end up being, so when we rationalize the denominator now, um, 5 squared is 25 times 2. So now we'd have the cube root of. 50, g cubed, z squared. And then we can't take the cube root of 50, but can we take the cube root of g cubed? Yeah. yeah. So therefore, I had to be equal to g 50 z squared all over 5z. So if it was changed to the roots, that's what your new answer would look like. Cool? Yes? Is that what you number 10? Um, yes, number 10, you do something similar to that. Yes. Anybody have any general questions on that?